was looking at my channel and all of my other crate tutorials have done great. So today we're back with another one. How to get the best 1v1 map settings. I'm not going to drag this out. I have a 1v1 map. I actually have multiple 1v1 maps. But this is the latest one. And these are the settings for it that literally make it perfect. No bugs, no glitches, just absolute perfect. It runs perfect and I get zero ping. You need to first go on your phone like this, whether whatever button that be, just enter your phone and then go into your loadout. You see there's a lot of options here, but you're going to go into island settings to get all of the island settings set up perfectly. We're gonna start off at the top in mode and we're gonna make our way down. First structure, you want max players two, teams two, team size one and rounds one. That's because the 1v1 match is going to keep on going with the same round. And it's obviously two teams because of 1v1. In terms of matchmaking settings, you want party choice on making you do it private or public. Team settings, no friendly fire. Team rotation disabled so you're not getting on the same team every couple rounds. And that is pretty much it. Class settings, no class. End of game. Game start, you want it immediate immediate game start because in a 1v1 map you don't want to be sitting there next to the ramps while it goes 3 2 1 you just want it to load in you want game start countdown off and force our max players off this means that someone can load in before someone else and they'll just be able to rebuild spawn location spawn pads and random you want an uh, individual respawn type and respawn time of three seconds so they can die and then teleport back leaving the player up top time to clip whatever he's done or get back down or whatever he wants to do there's still spawn immunity times so in public lobbies, people can't just spawn kill. And you want to keep the spawn limit at infinite, you can see right here. But unlimited 1v1s, it sounds fun, right? And join in progress, you should always spawn. This means if someone leaves and someone joins, the next player can spawn in with everyone. It doesn't really matter what you put, I've just got island to start and spectating, because after last spawn go to, it doesn't really matter, because you've got unlimited spawns. In terms of the eliminations tab, down but not out, you just want it on default, because you only have one player per team, so there's not going to be knocks or anything. Uh, don't override the reboot card because there's no teammates. You want the limited players items to keep. This is so they don't keep dropping the guns out of the loadout. It's a pretty big change. And the health granted elimination, you want 200 or 185 if you have a 185 map. This is so you can get straight back up to 200 health for the next round and you're not just staying on the same health. No materials granted on elimination because you're going to set that to unlimited later. And you're going to go on to scoring you should allow manual respawning in case there's any glitches though if there's vehicles in your map always make sure the vehicle trick score multiply is zero because it's, it's actually something that you're going to get score added onto the player's score just by doing tricks show individual scores you want like yes and time alive start point player spawn you want elimination score on one and no assist score the voice chat and the spectating doesn't really matter too much you should be allowed to spectate but um doesn't really matter end condition off no and no victory condition disables game condition it doesn't really matter because the first round goes on forever post game you just doesn't really matter either because as soon as someone leaves someone new joins in so you can just ignore every single one of those tabs we go to the second one down which is round now this is this is all to do with how long the rounds last and time limit should be none time and direction should count up so you can see how long you've been in the map no off 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 so no eliminations to end no score to end it just goes on forever victory condition we got none and you got tiebreakers so that this is for the leaderboard when you go on the map eliminations damage dealt and damage taken doesn't really matter about post round let's go to player and controls we're gonna allow aim assist um you should I honestly just have fun with the energy i have it on normal settings so enemy max energy max 100 recharge to come out recharge delay i have it all on all on normal full damage i have off gravity normal jump fatigue off mantling on i'm basically keeping the game completely normal except i've taken away full damage hurdling is off sprinting is on and you can do cost per second and multiplier and stuff like that so i'd recommend doing that allow sliding on slide kick on the shoulder bashing on i don't think these are actually on in comp but it doesn't really matter too much it makes no difference to the gameplay for glider redeploy i have it off because it's very annoying when you try and do side jumps all of the flight speeds you can just leave in terms of health uh, just do whatever you want i have on 200 health and obviously invincibility off if you're onto an overshield map then um it's good for 185 185 you can have 180 health and then have five overshields you got 185 and whatever you hit it looks like a clip 
Yeah, these are the settings I've got for self damage. I don't really know too much about these. But in terms of pickups, I just have defaults and yes, allow item pickup. Building in a 1v1 map, you should always have allow building on, allowed to edit default. Building can destroy environment. No, you don't want your, your ramps to destroy when people build on them. Uh, 1x on all the healths and keep player built structures between rounds off. If it consumables off, I don't have any consumables in my one of that, but if you do, you should probably turn it on. Maximum building resources are 500, but I've also turned on infinite building resources so people can just build forever. You need this in a 1v1 map. People don't want to be limited to how much maps they've got in a 1v1 map. Now, reserve ammo, I've got on this unlimited ammo in this as well, which is fine, and allow item drop, no. So this means you can't drop items. You can't get rid of your guns, and you should not override the maximum equipment slots. In terms of equipment, uh, grapple full damage immunity off, pickaxe damage on. Do you want people to be able to pickaxe each other if they're being toxic? I don't know what goes on. Uh, just default, default. Weapon destruction, normal, 100%. Environmental damage, player built only. So you can hack other people's builds, but you can't hack at any of the environment. And enable fire, it doesn't really matter too much. There's no fire in a 1v1 map. Destruction damage, all. We have passed a large beef limit now. We're not going to go down to the fourth tab where we go into world. In terms of friendly AI, there's not normally any in 1v1 map, so just ignore that. Vehicles, I don't have any in my 1v1 map, but. You should always change to whichever setting you want best so can damage objects and vehicles harvesting i there's no harvesting on what you want doesn't really matter just keep it normal and ambience you can obviously change all of the how your one on map looks time of day changes the lighting the camera filter the brightness you can add fog thickness and fog color it's pretty cool you just have an overall different lighting effect depending on what time of day you choose Going on to user interface HUD, you should, I have it on score and turning off the top center's HUD because it looks really dodgy and looks like, yeah, it just gets in the way. Max Shack is on HUD too because you have two players. Turning off cumulative stat value on HUD means that players won't be able to see everything they've got on the map so far. So as soon as they leave the map, all the, the data will be destroyed, which is good. That's what we want. No one wants to save the one people map scores forever. Island code display, do you want to show the code? on the screen at the top i do so i have it on show elimination feed yes wood resource count yes all of the resource counts go on to nameplate uh you can always show team but it doesn't really matter because they're on the other team but if you want them to see each other then you can just switch that to uh yes always always on them something along those lines always show to all you can always limit the distance you can show only in line of sight yeah, I don't use that, but it is there for you to use. In terms of map, you've got map screen display, scoreboard, and display overview map, yeah. This actual scoreboard itself, uh, display time 15 seconds, yes, yes, show cumulative scoreboard, no. Exclude players who've left in, exclude them. First scoreboard column, I've got eliminations, that's how many times you've eliminated the other player, so the actual score. Then we've got the second scoreboard column, which is the damage dealt, and the third scoreboard column, which is the damage taken. Personally, these are essential, but they are really cool to look at. You can see maybe you're 10 6 up, but you've only done 200 more damage. It shows you're taking a lot of damage in the fights. Super cool, in my opinion, how you can do that. But yeah, fourth and fifth scoreboard column, I've just left completely empty. Going on to edit mode, it is pretty pointless, this tab. I literally haven't change a single thing on 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 off yeah i'm changing a single thing and there's nothing really to change debug i haven't turned debug on i'm not really sure what we can what we can do with debug but it is there it is an option if you want to research it in terms of permissions obviously this is this is for when you're editing the island if you want to do it as a duo or a trio of people you just add their permissions on there and add them to add them to edit I'd recommend having this on private because if people do join your game, they can't just change around mess up your map. In terms of media, this is where you can capture the lobby background. So if I press capture, I can then come in here and get a nice picture for the lobby background. Honestly, I wouldn't wouldn't do it. I'd probably edit your own, go into replay mode, capture a really nice photo, then edit it into the right size. I'd probably do that instead. It's a lot better of an option, definitely. A community is basically tutorials on how you can how you can learn to make maps which you don't need because you've got you and this guy right here that being said if you want to look at some of the other creative map tutorials the videos are on the screen right now to my left and to my right 
right there. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video and the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. Have a beautiful day.